Hello friends. So today we are going to see chapter number two of financial management, and the chapter's name is financial statements and financial analysis. In this chapter, we will see lot of things about what the financial statement is, what is the importance of these financial statements, what are the features of the statements, and what are the components, the most important part of financial statements. In India, we follow a system which is reported by the income tax authorities, and accordingly, we are supposed to report the business transactions to the government authorities and these statements are to be analyzed in different and proper manner so financial statements and financial analysis would perform the activities of helping the not only investors but the organizational heads to understand how this organization is going to perform or what are the activities the organization is doing so in this chapter we'll be seeing more importantly the statements and how the company's performance since last one year has been this statements also helps us to report lot of things about the organization let us see in detail about financial statements and financial analysis moving ahead what is financial statements financial statements are called as reports they are reports which are prepared by the company's accountant and these statements are very important for understanding how the company has performed in the market uh, these reports which are been prepared by the accountant summarizes the financial data contained in company's books of accounts and are issued periodically these financial statements conveys financial health of the firm how the company has performed over a period of time this financial statements informs to the people these financial statements are prepared for a lot of different categories of people for example we have got owners who for whom the financial statements are very important financial statements are also prepared for managers of the organizations to understand how the company's performance is happening statements are also prepared for the creditors to identify has been company able to use the funds of the creditors which they have borrowed from them properly or not then for other stakeholders now what do we mean by what stakeholders can someone think can you tell me friends what do we mean by stakeholders let us do one exercise quickly go on writing down in a pe with a pen and a book what do you mean by stakeholders if you can make a note of it yes i am asking you my dear friend what are stakeholders or who is stakeholders can someone think about it i am going to use one phrase to give you a hint what do we mean by stakeholder the hint is every shareholder is a stakeholder but every stakeholder is not a shareholder so who is a stakeholder yes can someone give me an idea yes you superb what you are thinking is absolutely correct now to make it more elaboratively and properly who are stakeholders let me give you give you all an example say for example on a road there is one of the very luxurious car going or it has been parked say for example the car name is known as mercedes benz which we call them usually as a merc there is a merc which is parked and sometimes in life you feel that wow what a car i should own one of this car when you showed an interest in that car on that particular moment you become friend a stakeholder of that company anyone who is having an interest in the company becomes the stakeholder similarly the statements are prepared for not only owners managers creditors but it is also prepared for all different kinds of stakeholders in other words stakeholders means anyone who has got interest or who are associated with the company the different people who are associated or who has got interest in the company may be say for example we have got employees then we have got sometimes banks uh, then we have got government authorities they all comprises of stakeholders and many more such different kinds of people so this financial statements in other words are reports which are prepared to satisfy make the potential investors the existing investors which are the owners also known as the shareholders to convey them some important information that how company has performed how is the financial health of the company and all these things will be identified with the help of financial statements moving ahead let us see what this financial statements comprises of financial statements as the name of this slide anatomy what do we mean by anatomy it means parts components what this financial statements is made up of financial statements comprises of two major statements which is visualized as balance sheet and income statements 
these two statements are very 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 important for an organization because these two statements gives us the understanding and puts a light to make us understand how the company has performed over a period of time balance sheet and income statement in india the companies follow a system a rule and that system and rule is known as indian gap the gap term is known as generally accepted accounting principles so as per generally accepted accounting principles the finance manager of the company has to prepare the statements these statements comprises of balance sheet and income statement what is balance sheet all about balance sheet is a statement of financial position showing the assets liabilities and capital as on a particular day so balance sheet will give us the financial position of the company how the company has been performing as on that particular date or as on that particular time moment or day that is what financial statement is going to give us the idea about so friends balance sheet is going to give us the idea about financial position of a company let us see what balance sheet is going to offer us the features of balance sheet the the balance sheet has got features like it indicates financial position as on a particular date so as on particular date what is going to be the financial position the company is going to tell us about that part next is the financial uh, statement that is comprising of a balance sheet has got two columns the left hand side column and the right hand side column the left hand side column in a balance sheet tells me something which is known as liabilities of the company and the right hand side talks more about the assets liabilities and assets are basically the most important component of an organization the data is presented on an going concern basis that is till the time company is going to move till the time company is going to go on and on this statements are going to give us information about that part position statement is not absolutely based on facts accounting practices assumptions and personal judgment also influences this kind of statements so balance sheet which is prepared to understand how the company is performing as on a particular date gives us understanding about how the company is doing the activities in the market and what exactly is the company's position that is my company's position is that the company has earned around 100000 dollars or company has earned around say for example uh, 50 crore of rupees in this particular financial year how we can say all this is or how we can identify this things these things can be shown seen and understood by the financial statement and that financial statement is called as balance sheet moving ahead now going in depth about what are the components on the liability side and asset side the liability side is made up of five departments or compartments these five compartments helps us to make a financial statement the five compartments are first is share and capital share capital second is reserves and surpluses third is secured unsecured loans fourth is current liabilities and the fifth part is on its provisions i repeat for everyone the balance sheet in that liability side which is on the left side comprises of five compartments the first compartment is on its share capital second is on its reserves and surplus third is on its secured unsecured loans fourth is on its current liabilities and the fifth is known as provisions let us see in depth and understand each department of a uh, balance sheet of liability side in detail now this component is important because it will help us to analyze as the chapter's name is financial statements and financial analysis if i have to go ahead and analyze the statements i need to understand the statements very clearly and properly so statement which comprises of all these parts let us go in detail and understand the first in this is known as share capital now what is share capital share capital is the owners fund which company gets from the people in the business company makes them owners say for example we start a business me ramesh and suresh we three start a business when we start a business we will put in funds in our business so money going from our own pocket is going to be called as what owners capital or share capital 
so share capital has got in the balance sheet lot of compartments the first compartment in share capital is known as authorized share capital then we have got issued capital then we have got subscribed and paid up capital this authorized capital issued capital subscribed and paid up capital is meant meant for two things that is equity shares as well as preference shares details of shares issued for cash and other than cash bonus etc are separately provided terms of redemption are also spelled out in this particular compartment or department on the balance sheet of the liability side this is the first part in the balance sheet of the liability side now what do you mean by authorized capital authorized capital is that capital which has been authorized by the regulatory body of the financial market that is this is the maximum amount of shares the company can issue next is the issued capital from that maximum amount how much company will issue is known as issued capital from that issued capital how many number of shares people are going to subscribe and for which the company people will pay is known as subscribed and paid up capital let me now explain you with the help of an example what this issued capital authorized capital subscribed and paid up capital is meant as okay so this is the example of understanding the different kinds of share capital the first we have got authorized capital as i just told you authorized capital is the capital which has been authorized by the financial regulator of the country in for example in india we have got an authorized capital uh, which has been decided by securities exchange board of india which is called as sebi so sebi authorizes the company to issue maximum up to that much amount of shares we have got case 1 in case 1 company can issue maximum up to 10 lakh shares i will talk first about case 1 and then we'll move on to case 2 in case 1 company can issue maximum up to 10 lakh shares on the other side we have got issued capital from 10 lakh shares in case one that is been by a company company issues maximum up, up to 7 lakh shares in the market i repeat company can maximum issue as per this regulator that is seb is how much 10 lakh shares from 10 lakh shares the company is issuing how much in the market 7 lakh shares from 7 lakh shares issued in the market the public who is subscribing and paying money are how much 9 lakh shares when the subscribed and paid up capital is more than issued capital this phenomena is called as what this phenomena is called as over subscription i repeat once again whenever the issued capital is more than the subscribed sorry whenever the subscribed and paid up capital is more than the issued capital it is called as over subscription in other case that is case 2 the company is authorized to maximum issue 15 lakh shares from this 15 lakh shares company issues in the market 12 lakh shares and from this 12 lakh shares there are people who are subscribing to it that is 8 lakh shares so the issued is more and subscription is less whenever issued capital is more than the subscribed capital this kind of concept is known as what under subscription this kind of subscription is known as what under subscription now friends under the concept of over subscription the company will give shares to the people or to the public on pro rata basis pro rata basis means what everyone who has subscribed in case one will get the shares how much the company will check how much each one of them have subscribed accordingly they will give them number of shares say for example yes you mr akash you have subscribed to 10000 shares you wanted 10000 shares of the company from 10000 shares company will not give you all the 10000 shares company might give you 8500 shares someone else is there say for example miss mansi is there mansi has asked for 4000 shares the company will give to her around 2000 shares so accordingly everyone will get some amount of shares and everyone will be uniformly distributed some or other amount of shares this kind of concept is known as over subscription under the case 2 we have got a scenario where under subscription is there 
here the company will issue shares and give shares to everyone in the company who has asked for the shares because company wanted 12 lakh and they got 8 lakh shares so here in this balance sheet which we are seeing the all these compartments are written how much company is authorized to issue by the regulatory body that is SEBI then second is how much company has actually issued in the market how much has company I mean people subscribed and paid for buying these shares all these components will be available in the first part first compartment or first department of the balance sheet on the left hand side of the liabilities I hope everyone has got this concept clearly great now next let us now move on to the next compartment reserves and surplus is our next part of the liability, liability side on the left hand side of the balance sheet now reserves and surplus what do we mean by what reserves reserves means backup there are different compartments a company prepares reserves for reserves may be for different reasons sometimes reserves in the organization is kept for making sure that company has got enough amount of funds at the backdrop of the company for requirement of taking care of certain contingencies certain kinds of problems sometimes company may face a problem with regards to strike there may be riot there may be sometimes drought sometimes there may be company would keep, would keep some amount of reserves to pay to the shareholders in and buying back the shares so these are different kinds of reserves so reserves and surpluses are in different format and different names we may have reserves which are called as either we can have capital reserve capital redemption reserve share premium account then we have got surplus whenever the company does the business and there is some surplus amount that is the profit what the company earns is written in this compartment which is also known as income balance after providing for dividends, bonus and other reserves proposed additions to reserves and last is sinking fund reserve these are different compartments in the reserves and surplus to name and make understand what are different kinds of reserves let me give an example of a capital redemption reserve now what is capital redemption reserve what happens is that companies buy back companies out of earning the business I mean running the business and earning some amount of profit keep some amount aside under the account of known as capital redemption reserve now when the companies keep this amount aside in format of capital redemption reserve it is to make sure the company pays back the money from people who they have issued shares so say for example yes Mr. Akash you are there in the earlier example as I gave you you were issued that much amount of shares so you becomes the owner since you are the owner now company wants to give you money back and take the shares from you so that company's power with regards to voting taking decisions is available in a company's hand so they collect the money in this reserve account which is known as capital redemption reserve money are going to be collected and this money which company collects will be paid over a period of time to the shareholders back and the shares will be bought back this basically is capital redemption reserve sometimes also happens that the company issues the shares more than the face value now what do we mean by face value face value is the value at which company issues the shares in the market to the public and the shareholders subscribes to that much amount of shares when, when the public subscribes to that much amount of shares the base value or the face value is the value at which the share certificate would be at in India we have got four different parts of share certificate in India we can have four different face value face value in India would be either of rupee 1, 2 rupees 5 rupees and 10 rupees these are four different components or different types of the face value 1 rupee 2 rupee 5 rupee and 10 rupee but company always issue shares at more than the face value why does a company issue the shares more than the face value simply because company has been existing in the market since last 15 years sometimes 20 years and because the company existing in the market since last 20 years asks you to pay an extra amount to be a participant to be an owner of the organization which is already existing since last 20 years the amount which you are paying extra over and above the face value is called as premium amount so you as a company or you as a person invest in the company by paying extra amount that extra amount is allocated in this account which is in a share premium account then we have got surplus proposed additions so company proposes that much amount of additions to the different kinds of reserves and last is sinking fund what is sinking fund whenever company is going to die 
and it wants to stand back the company is going to uh, use this fund which is known as sinking fund the word sinking means what a ship which is going to drown if it wants to survive it is to try and make sure it reaches to the shore similarly companies which are they are existing in the market they are sinking they are going down when they are going down and they want to survive or stand back this fund is utilized i'll give you an example of sinking fund there is a business in india which was known as uh, theaters or basically movie business movies are made by film stars and directors and producers and been shown uh, in different kinds of entertainment halls in india in traditional times we used to have movie halls which are of single screen these single screen industries moved on and went into the area where they started showing movies by, by multiplexes so single screen owners were in deep tension and deep trouble how do they get the money to move ahead and transform themselves from single screen to multiplexes how they can do that particular i mean how they can achieve the target for moving from single screen to multiplex here the company like single screen owners used to sell the tickets and make some money from the money what they has to earn some amount of portion they has to transfer to sinking fund account now sinking fund account is the account which when the company wants to go in for renovation for modernization for expansion they would use after seeing that in the nearby vicinity nearby locality everyone moving on to the multiplexes the single screen owners took the fund out of the sinking fund account and re-strategize formulating the new plans for developing the multiplexes so this funds which single screen owners were able to utilize they were able to utilize from the sinking fund account so this is how different kinds of reserves and surpluses helps the company to make sure they can make uh, use of the money at the backup or in the contingencies of the business moving on to the third compartment on the balance sheet on the liability side is on a secured and unsecured loans this compartment talks more about how the company can get the funds in the business in borrowed format that is they are going to take loans now there are two different types of loans first is on a secured loans and second is on a unsecured loans secured loans are those loans which are secured against some kind of a security whereas unsecured loans are those loans which are not secured against any kind of a security now under secured loans we have a different kinds of instruments like by issuing debentures the company borrowed fund borrows fund when they issue debentures this debenture holders are secured against some kind of a security we have got loans from banks when you take loans from bank you are supposed to hypothecate or give some some things as collateral security for taking things from the bank as borrowing from the bank so that is basically when you give something in kind of pledge hypothecation lien or trying to borrow that particular concept against which the company asks something to give them against which they will give money in uh, consultation with that is known as secured loans we also have got different types of other advances secured against some assets these compartment belongs to secured and unsecured activities of the business then we have got deposits bank loans and other advances not secured against any assets appears under unsecured loans category so the below part are different kinds of instruments which is not secured against any kind of a security like for example sometimes bank loans you may ask you may think what do we mean by loans from banks and bank loans how loans from banks are a part of secured loans and how bank loans are part of unsecured loans they both mean the same no is a simple difference when you want to take a loan from a bank you are supposed to give something as a security to borrow from the bank what do we mean by bank loan since the company is existing in the market last 30 to 40 years there is a goodwill which company develops in the bank here bank does not ask for any kind of security the bank on its own out of respect about the company and brand name gives you money to use without any security hence it becomes part of unsecured loan so sometimes bank also gives you loan uh, for helping you or your business to grow ahead in the market so this is also some kinds of money which the company can borrow borrow from the market so this compartment is more on as secured and unsecured loans moving next in the liability side which is the compartment of balance sheet on the left hand side the fourth compartment is on as current liabilities these are the liabilities which company has to repay 
within a year. The different kinds of com uh, things available in the current liabilities are sundry creditors, unclaimed dividends, etc. appear under this head. So what do you mean by sundry creditors or unclaimed dividends? Which we have to pay within a year are compartment of the current liabilities concept. The fifth part is known as provisions. Provisions is what? Provisions means we have spent this year, we have made the expense this year in the accounts, but money will go out in the next financial year is called as provisions. We provide for expenses. We have spent for expenses in the, this year of the financial year, but we will pay in the next financial year because say for example, I got a telephone bill in the month of in, in India, particularly we follow year ending from uh, 1st of April to 31st March. So March month bill, what I have got, I will be paying in the month of April. I will be actually paying cash in month of April. But I will be recording that particular amount when in the books because it is an expense of March. So I will be writing that provision. I have provided this much amount which I will be paying in next year. Those parts becomes the compartment of provisions. Provision includes interest accrued, provision for taxes payable, proposed dividend etc. So these are all going to be part of provisions. Apart from that part, these are the five different parts which will be in the part of balance sheet on the liability side. Below the liabilities, there is one more compartment which is shown or which is written as footnote. And in the footnote to the balance sheet, there is one thing which is written as contingent liabilities. What do we mean by contingent liabilities? Contingent liabilities are those liabilities which may or may not occur. Sometimes it may be a liability, sometimes it may not be a liability. Sometimes that may be achieved, sometimes it may not be achieved. Let me give an example to explain you what do we mean by contingent liabilities. What has happened that the company had given loans, company had given loans to some party. When company had given loans to some party, the company was supposed to take this money back from that party. But the party whom company had given loan is not paying for last 60 days, sometimes 90 days, sometimes maybe 120 days. So company cannot write them in the balance sheet. Hence company takes that value of that company out of the balance sheet and writes it down below the balance sheet as in contingent liability which means that company will pay but when the opposite company who has borrowed from us will pay but when it is going to pay we are not clear hence it becomes a part of the uh, footnote that is below the balance sheet so there are five different compartments involved in the liability side let us have a quick recap of what these five compartments were the first part was known as share capital the share capital we saw there are different uh, kinds of share capital we may have authorized share capital we may have issued share capital then we may have subscribed and paid up capital then we saw different kinds of second part, second compartment which was known as reserves and surplus which is backup. We saw different kinds of reserves and surpluses like share, is, uh, share premium reserve, capital reserve, capital redemption reserve, sinking fund reserve and etc. different parts. The third is known as secured and unsecured loans. Secured loans are those loans which company are going to secure against some kind of a security. Whereas unsecured loans are those loans which a company are not going to secure against any kind of a security. Then the fourth was known as current liabilities, which company had to repay within a year. And the last part, it was known as provisions, which means company has provided for the expenses uh, in the books, but company will actually pay in the next year. And below, we write down footnote, which is known as contingent liability. Now, moving on from balance sheet on the liability side to the balance sheet on the right hand side, which is known as assets side. Assets are the place where company is going to use these funds. Now let me explain you some little technical concept. Liability side and asset side. Usually what do we mean by term liability? We look liability as we are supposed to pay to them. Isn't it? Yes Mr. Mahesh what you are sitting and listening to the lecture. Tell me honestly what do we mean by what liability? Yes you Mr. Suraj you are listening to the lecture. Can you tell me what do we mean by what liability? Correct what you have thought about. Correct what you are trying to explain me. Liability is something to whom I am supposed to pay. And what do we mean by assets? Assets means from whom I am supposed to get my money back is what we call it as assets. But when someone asks me personally, what do you mean by liability and what do we mean by what assets? 
I have got a different way of understanding and explaining. I will tell exactly what do I interpret liability as. Liabilities is nothing but source from where I am getting the funds. I repeat, liabilities is something where I am going to get the money from market. That is, it becomes my sources of funds. And what is assets? It is application or use of those funds. I source the funds from this part and I use this funds in that part. That is how I link myself to liabilities and assets. So assets is what? Assets are represented by, remember, assets are represented by the source of funds. From where I have sourced the funds, where exactly I can represent it? I can represent it in the assets side. There are different compartments in the assets like liabilities. The first compartment is known as fixed assets. The second compartment is known as investments. The third compartment is known as current assets, loans and advances. The fourth compartment is known as miscellaneous expenses. And the last compartment is known as balance of income statement. I will repeat once again for everyone. There are five compartments on the balance sheet on the assets side. That is the right hand side of the column or the, of the T diagram. The right hand side comprises of first which will be which will be which is dedicated to fixed assets second is known as investments third compartment is known as current assets loans and advances the fourth compartment is known as miscellaneous expenses and the fifth compartment is known as balance of income statement these are the five compartments on the balance sheet on the assets side let us now quickly go and look into different kinds of compartments what this asset side has been made up for the fixed assets in fixed assets, we have got two different types of fixed assets. First is known as tangible fixed assets and second is known as intangible fixed assets. Tangible fixed assets are those fixed assets which a person can touch, which they can hold, which they can own. But intangible fixed assets are those fixed assets which company cannot touch, which company cannot hold, company cannot own. So tangible fixed assets comprises of fixed assets like we have got land, building, plant, machinery, furniture, fixtures, etc. becomes the part of the tangible fixed assets. Under intangible fixed assets, we have got components such as goodwill, patents, copyrights, trademarks, IPRs that is intellectual property rights, etc. becomes the part of the intangible fixed assets. Under tangible fixed assets, we have got different compartments because of the wear and tear of the fixed assets, the value of these tangible fixed assets will go down. And the value when of the tangible fixed assets goes down, it is called as depreciation. Absolutely correct. So here in this part of the fixed assets, we will have expenditure in goodwill, land, buildings, plant, machinery, furniture, fittings, etc. is written under this head. Under each item, details of original cost, it addition, its additions and deductions would be mentioned from the during the year and total depreciation till the date are also shown in this compartment. Whenever the tangible asset is its value goes down, it is called as depreciation. Whenever I repeat tangible fixed asset, which is what? Can someone tell me what are tangible fixed asset? Yes, you Mansi, you tell me what are the different kinds of tangible fixed assets? Yes, you pile, can you tell me what are the tangible fixed assets? Correct, we have got land, building, machinery, furniture, fittings. This value when it is going to go down, it is called as what? Correct, it is called as depreciation. But when intangible fixed assets like goodwill, patents, copyrights, trademarks, intellectual property rights, its values goes up. Oh. Value of intangible fixed asset? Does the value of intangible fixed assets goes down? Is the question which you need to ask. Can the value of intangible fixed assets go down? Yes, someone can tell me. Can the value of goodwill go down? Can the value of patents go down? Trademarks, copyrights, intellectual property rights, can the value of these kind of, kind of fixed assets go down? Yes, they can definitely go down. How it can go down? When the company is not earning profits well, then the goodwill of the com uh, company in the market goes down. When patents, company has not given somebody to use, so the income generated out of the patents may go down. Similarly, royalties or trademarks or say for example intellectual property rights. If the company has not given to somebody to use, the value of that particular company is going to go down. And when the value of intangible fixed assets goes down, 
इट इज कॉल एज वॉट माई डियर फ्रेंड्स इट इज कॉल एज एमोरटाइजेशन आई रिपीट इट इज कॉल एज वॉट एमोरटाइजेशन सो ऑल द डिटेल्स अबाउट डेप्रिसिएशन एंड एमोरटाइजेशन वुड बी मैं दिस हेड दिस इज वॉट इज ऑन एज बैलेंस शीट ऑन दसेट साइड द फर्स्ट कंपार्टमेंट विच इज ऑन एज फिक्स एसेट्स then we have got the second compartment the second compartment is on its investments in this compartment all activities which the company has done for earning future returns is mentioned in this compartment investments means what company invests fund company invests fund in the market now tell me one quick answer quest answers of the question if i have to ask you all manoj if you can hear me properly can you tell me should we invest Yes, Suresh, you are sitting over there. Can you tell me should we invest? Vikram, you are listening to the lecture. Can you tell me should we invest? Yes, Mahesh, you can tell me uh, should we invest? There are so many of people who would say yes, we should invest. But my question is to you all: Why should we invest? Should a company invest? Yes, definitely, company should invest. But why should a company invest? Can someone tell me why should a company invest? Yes, you. Yes, Neha. Can you tell me? Yes, what you are saying is correct. That is, investment should be done for future earnings. Perfect. Then, yes, you. Can you tell me, Pail? Why should we invest? Correct. Investment should be done for the purpose of uh, securing our future. Or sometimes, what you are rightly saying, Rakesh, it is to be done so that I can make profits in the future. If yes, somebody else can think about, great. What you are saying is correct. But if someone asks me. Sir, should we invest? Yes, my answer is also yes. We should invest. But why should we invest? The answer which comes up to my mind is that we should invest because we should be able to beat the inflation. Now, what do I mean by inflation? Inflation means rising price or value of the price is going to go down, and hence we are supposed to invest. Similarly, company also is worried about the value of money going down tomorrow. Today's thousand. Does not remains in the next year the same thousand. It reduces its value from thousand. Next year the value becomes say for example nine hundred and fifty. So value is going down. So to 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 make sure the value does not go down of my money year after year, I need to invest. So company also invests. When company invests for more than one year, it will be written in this compartment, which is known as investments. Amounts invested in government or trust securities, shares, debentures, or bonds of other companies are covered under this head. Investments are classified into trade investments and other investments. Trade investments means what? Other than in subsidiary companies, if company is going to invest in other than the subsidiary companies, it is known as what? Trade investments. If it invests in subsidiary companies of the group main head, it is known as other investments. So these are different kinds of. Uh, compartments in the investment we have got government or trust securities shares debentures bonds of the other companies are covered under this head so investments are usually classified as trade investments and other investments so this compartment of the second side second compartment of the asset side belongs to the investment compartment 